Let's go through and the, the design flow, and I've, I've tried to simplify this down into seven steps. Uh, keep in mind that there's you know, dozens and dozens probably under each one of these, but these are the, first, the seven simple steps that will get you from your, uh, your idea of a chip all the way down to the design, ready to go manufacture it. The, we, um, and I'm gonna walk through these one at a time in separate videos so that you'll be able to see examples and, and get a little more detail. But overall, the first thing you do is decide what you want your chip to do. Then you say, what kind of gates do I need? Then you make sure the chip is testable because remember, we don't want to make the chip uh, wrong because when we test it, we have to throw them away. So let's make sure we can test them properly. Then we want to verify it one more time, just make sure it's gonna work. Uh, finally, we're gonna figure out the physical um, layout, if you like, and I'll, I'll talk about that again. And, and this is where all the little pieces are gonna fit in, uh, putting the little puzzle pieces together, if you like. We'll lay it out, then we're gonna check it one more time. A lot of checking going on here. And then finally, we'll be ready to turn the design into silicon and actually put those wafers together. These first three steps are, again, that design implementation, the logic design part that we saw in the previous uh, diagram in that uh, same purple colored oval. The next step is verification. And even though it's one step, remember it's one of the most uh, time consuming aspects of the whole design flow. And then the last parts are the physical design, the actual uh, physical implementation of the chip. We also call this design for manufacturing because you are preparing your idea, your design to get ready to send data over to be manufactured into an actual chip. All right, step one. The first thing you have to do is tell the computer what it is you want your chip to do. So you write a spec, or a specification is what spec stands for. It doesn't stand for glasses, it stands for a specification. You write the specification and you use one of those languages that I talked about in an earlier video, a hardware description language like System Verilog or VHDL. And that's going to tell the computer, this is exactly the kind of chip that I want you to help me design. So let's go back to our cell phone ringer for uh, a good example. If I'm gonna write the spec for a cell phone ringer, it might look like this. Now keep in mind, this is not official system Verilog language. This is not official VHDL. If you engineers are still out there, don't, don't tell me that this is bad syntax because I know it. But anyway, it's simplified. The reason it looks like this is it's human readable. So you, the, the layperson, can actually read this and say, oh, my cell phone ringer says, if there's an incoming call and my line is available, then ring. So you can actually write to the computer, computer, design me a chip that is a cell phone ringer that says if there's a call coming in and my line's available, then make it ring. So you can see how simple these hardware description languages can be to tell the computer what kind of a chip you want to design. Today's chips, again, can have millions of lines of the specification. So millions of lines of system Verilog language. And they can be created by a team of 100 people located all around the world, or sometimes even more. And it can take six months or more to put together some of these complex designs. What's interesting about having a team of 100 people that are located all around the world, sometimes I think that it's easier to design a chip than it is to get people to be able to communicate. There's time zone challenges, there's language barriers, there's misunderstandings. So even the human aspect of getting a team of 100 people to work on something so complex is, is kind of a fascinating aspect of computer design, computer chip design, along with the details of, I'm gonna write a million lines saying, if my cell phone does this, then do this, and if it does this, then do this, and then what if this happens, then make sure the chip will do this, and that's what all of the specifications is all about, but it's very, very complicated. So what you can do, instead of writing this yourself, let's say you know that um, your engineer neighbor has already written the specification for the most awesome cell phone ringer. You can go buy that and you don't have to create it yourself. You can use that then in your next generation cell phone because the ringer part is just fine. So you can buy these ready-made specifications and we call these IP that I talked about earlier, intellectual property, because they're little ideas, but you can buy them from other people. As an example, for my company, Synopsys, we sell what's called the Designware Library. 
And this is a collection of little specifications that you can, that you can purchase and put them all together but like building blocks in order to build something bigger and better. Uh, that's the importance of, of IP or ready-made specs is that you can reuse information and, and design ideas that people have already created. The next thing that you do is you take your specification and you give it to the computer. You say, here computer, here's my write-up of everything I want you to help me design. And it gets started. The example from Synopsys, the tool that does that is called Design Compiler Explorer. You just give them the, your, your specification and off it goes. And I was trying to find a graphic for this that would be kind of interesting, but I couldn't find anything. So I found a really neat picture that um, this is Brussels sprouts. So if you don't know how Brussels sprouts grow, it's like totally amazing. Up on the top here, there are enormous leaves and then all the sprouts are kind of clinging down the stalk that's about this big. And Brussels sprouts are just fascinating to me and I love them. And if you cook them right, they absolutely taste delicious. But I digress, so let's go on to the design flow and eat your Brussels sprouts. <laughs> 